When my father passed away in August 2016, it was sudden and devastating. I was teaching abroad at the time, and the news shattered me. Growing up, my dad and I had been close, but as I got older, our relationship fractured. He cheated on my mom repeatedly, which ultimately led to their bitter divorce. My siblings and I distanced ourselves from him, scarred by the trauma of intimate partner violence and the cold gossip from our paternal relatives, who whispered that my mother, a divorced Hmong woman, had somehow failed. Grief has a way of distorting reality. It drags you under, pulls you into a strange realm where the past and present blur, and sometimes the world of the living feels like it's slipping away. After my dad's funeral, I began hearing the Hmong reed pipe, the traditional Hmong reed pipe, faintly playing at night. At first, it seemed like a trick of the mind, a symptom of my overwhelmed state. But then, my sisters confessed they heard it too, accompanied by soft, distant weeping. The sound always came when the night was at its deepest, when the air felt too still, too heavy. We all stayed together in my sister's apartment for a while, clinging to the safety of each other's presence. But each night, the Hmong reed pipe played, haunting, mournful, like a funeral song that never ended. There was something malevolent in the music, as though it wasn't merely a sound, but a presence, something dark, ancient, and patient. It wasn't until one night that the malevolence became more than just sound. I shared the guest room with one of my sisters. It was past midnight when she shook me awake, her voice trembling as she whispered, Someone's here. I can hear them breathing. The room was suffocatingly dark, the kind of darkness where the walls and ceiling disappear and you feel suspended in a void. But even in that blackness, I sensed it too. Something else was with us. The air in the room shifted and a faint but undeniable breath brushed against my ear. My heart hammered in my chest as I pulled the blanket over us, instinctively shielding myself, though I knew it wouldn't help. Whatever was there was already too close. I whispered to her to sleep, though terror gripped me. I could feel the presence linger, hovering like a predator waiting for us to acknowledge it. I refused to give it that power. Instead, I silently chanted under my breath, begging it to leave, but it didn't. Even when I eventually fell into a fitful sleep, I knew it hadn't gone. Months later, after I graduated with my bachelor's degree, I tried to escape the weight of my grief, the stress from school, and the sorrow of losing my father had taken a toll, so I decided to treat myself to a night out. Since I didn't have my driver's license, I took an Uber to the mall, where I had dinner, watched a movie, and tried to forget the heaviness pressing on my spirit. It wasn't until I called another Uber to return home that the weight came crashing back. The driver, a middle-aged Hmong man, seemed friendly at first. We exchanged pleasantries, talking about our families. Then out of nowhere, he asked, is anyone in your family a shaman? His question sent a ripple of unease through me. I replied, no, but my family thinks it might be me or my oldest sister. We're not sure yet. My dad passed away recently and my spirit's been weak. I've had strange experiences, but I always thought it was grief. There was a long pause. I hoped that was the end of the conversation. But then he said, I asked because I can hear your soul whispering in my ear. A shiver crawled up my spine. He continued, I think you're going to become a shaman, but not in the way you expect. You'll speak with the dead. Your father's name was Beher, wasn't it? He loved soccer, used to coach Hmong tournaments. My blood turned to ice. Yes, I whispered, the word catching in my throat. I went to high school with him, the driver said, his tone unnervingly casual. We lost touch though. I'm sorry for your loss. I was silent, 
unsure how to process this man who seemed to know my life in such eerie detail. As we neared my home, he asked, Would you like me to read your palm? I can tell you more about your future. My grandmother had always warned me, never let a stranger read your palm. Some shamans might have dark intentions, a gift twisted into a curse. I could hear her voice in my head, urging me not to trust him. My heart raced as we pulled up to my house, the tension between us palpable. When he parked, he turned toward me, extending his hand. I can read your palm now. Panic gripped me. I opened the door, heart hammering, and quickly blurted, No, I've changed my mind. For a moment, his face remained blank, as if something was calculating behind his eyes. Then he smiled. Okay, have a good night. I stumbled out of the car, watching it disappear into the night as a cold breeze stirred the leaves. Just as I was about to unlock the door, I froze. The sound of the Hmong reed pipe drifted toward me again, this time louder, more insistent. Then from the shadows, a soft whistle echoed through the street. It wasn't playful or innocent. It was a warning. Inside, I locked every door and called my sister. As I recounted the night's events, I couldn't shake the feeling that the Hmong reed pipe wasn't just a ghostly reminder of my father. It was a harbinger of something much darker, something that had always been watching me, waiting for the right moment to reveal itself. My family suspects I might be a rising shaman, but I can't help but wonder, what if that's exactly what it wants? Since my father's passing, my dreams have become more vivid, more unsettling. I often find myself standing in a house made of dirt, buried into the side of a hill. It feels alive, like a grave that breathes. And every time I dream of it, I can feel the weight of the earth pressing down on me, pulling me closer to whatever lies beneath. I know that the spirits aren't finished with me. Not yet.